Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. London. Philip, Queen Elizabeth II's husband and therefore the longest serving consort of any British monarch, has died at age 99. A statement posted on the royal family's website Friday morning said, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen announces the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness gave up the ghost peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The royal family joined with people around the world in mourning his loss. Philip spent 65 years supporting the Queen, retiring from his public role in 2017 and staying largely out of view since. In his active years, he helped set a replacement course for the monarchy under a young Queen, championing Britain itself, also as environmental causes, science and technology. Philip's relationship with the young Princess Elizabeth began as a story of a young love. We have as if we had belonged to each other for years, Elizabeth wrote during a letter to her parents shortly after they married. Over the years, the Queen acknowledged Philip's deep influence on her, calling him her strength and stay during a speech on their 50th anniversary in 1997. I and his whole family and this and lots of other countries owe him a debt far greater than he would ever claim or we shall ever know, she said at the time. The intensely private prince will likely be remembered for his earlier efforts to assist and modernise the royal family's image during a time of great change for Britain and therefore the world, especially at the outset of Elizabeth's reign in 1952. He also developed a reputation for the occasional brusque comment and crass, if not racist, jokes. The Queen inherited from her father a model of monarchy that was very hands-off, old-fashioned and slightly invisible, said Sarah Griswood, a historian and therefore the foreign author of Elizabeth, The Queen and the Crown. It wasn't equipped to affect a replacement media age and Philip played an enormous role in moving it forward then. Philip helped to bring the royals to life on television instead of through radio reports. He was a primary member of the royalty to try to get a televised interview and he presented a show on a royal tour of the Commonwealth. He's also said to process had a hand in televising the Queen's coronation in 1953 and in organising a groundbreaking 1969 television documentary about the family. He helped create the model of British royalty that was enabled it to continue forward into the 21st century, Griswood said. We may have lost sight of that now, but I hope we'll remember him for it. Despite being born into royalty, Philip's infancy wasn't typically royal. Born on June 10th, 1921, on the Greek island of Corfu, he was the sole son of Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark and Princess Alice of Battenberg. Greece's king, Philip's uncle, was forced to abdicate when Philip was a baby and therefore the family fled to Paris, with Philip famously carried to safety during a crib made up of an orange box. At age seven, he moved to England, where he lived at Kensington Palace, now home to Prince William. Philip lived there together with his paternal grandmother, Victoria Mountbatten, and later attended Gordonstown, a private school in Scotland. At 18, Philip joined the Royal Navy and graduated from the Britannia Royal Naval College as a top cadet. He saw active duty from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean, and in 1945, at the top of World War II, he was in Tokyo Bay when the Japanese surrendered. Philip's military career was truly central to his character, unlike perhaps other royals consistent with Ashley Jackson, a professor of imperial and military history at King's College London. It's easy to look at the military career of a royal male and see it as a rite of passage, but with Philip one must look beyond that, he said. He joined when he wasn't anywhere near marrying the longer-term queen. This was a career path for a Greek prince, he added. This wasn't a quick dalliance within the military. It's important to notice that he's clearly an exceptional officer. Then referred to as Philip Mountbatten, he first met his cousin Elizabeth in 1934 at a family wedding. The two are both great-great-grandchildren of Victoria. The couple exchanged letters while Philip was overseas during the war, only occasionally seeing one another. They might leave driving in Philip's tiny MG sports car, also dancing at London nightclubs. The pair married at Westminster Abbey on November 20th, 1947, with around 2,000 guests attending and another 200 million taking note of the ceremony on the radio. Before the marriage, Philip wrote to Elizabeth, Two are spared within the war and seeing victory, to possess being given the prospect to rest and to readjust myself, to possess fallen crazy completely and unreservedly, makes all one's personal and even the world's troubles seem small and petty. Philip renounced his Greek royal title and has become a British citizen. Elizabeth's father, King George VI, also gave him a replacement title, the Duke of Edinburgh. Two years later, the couple moved to Malta, where Philip assumed command of a battleship, the last active command in his military career, far away from Britain. The couple were ready to live the life of a military officer and his wife. But any freedom Elizabeth and Philip had was curtailed by the declining health of her father, King George VI, who died in 1952, while Elizabeth, just 25, was in Kenya on a royal tour with Philip. 
they were relaxing at a wildlife viewing o o canopy and the African wilderness once they were informed of the qu king's death. Philip broke the news to Elizabeth during a walk on the farm. From that moment on, he became the Queen's consort, the title given to the official companion of the monarch. There in role, Philip, who met every post-war US president, aside from Donald Trump, sought to portray himself as working tirelessly in support of his wife. In a 2011 interview with British broadcaster ITV, Philip explained why he gave up a lively naval career. Being married to the Queen, it appeared to me, my first duty was to serve her in the best way I could. He championed because of causes that caught his imagination and helped found the Royal Academy of Engineering, which promotes engineering excellence and education, and served because the first president of the Planet Wildlife Fund. He created the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, a series of challenges to encourage children to require up adventures within the outdoors, and had a hand in restoring both Windsor Castle after a devastating file, fire and Westminster Abbey. He also promoted the utilisation of English language outside Britain within the years after the breakup of British Empire. What's more, he made the operations of the royal estates more efficient, consistent with royal biographer Ingrid Seward, who wrote Prince Philip Revealed. Philip modernised everything, but slowly as he had opposition from the faction, who wanted to stay it because it was, she said. For instance, the Buckingham Palace kitchens, which were almost half a mile from the dining room, took him years to vary. Even after the couple's children took on official duties in support of the Queen, Philip remained one among the foremost active royals until his retirement. He did, however, occasionally make comments deemed racist or insensitive, garnering much unwanted attention to the royal family. A remark about British students getting slitty eyes during a visit to China within the 1980s became symbolic of his often unguarded manner. One of his grandsons, Prince William, often spoke fondly of his grandfather's characteristic bluntness, saying in 2004 that he will tell me something I do not want to listen to and doesn't care if I be upset about it. He knows it's the proper thing to mention. After retiring from public life in August 2017, Philip continued to draw attention, most notably by crashing his car on the brink of the Sandringham estate in January 2019. He sent a letter of apology to a lady within the other car who was injured within the wreck, and he gave up his driver's licence. He also drew criticism when he was photographed soon after driving without a seatbelt. Unlike many men of his generation, Philip took a lively role in raising his children. Charles was born in 1948 and his sister Princess Anne two years later. There was an almost 10-year gap before Prince Andrew was born in 1960 and Edward arrived in 1964. For a masculine man who was proactive, who had probably a stellar naval career before him, to require on what's traditionally a wife's role of some, for somebody of his generation, well, it's a tremendous achievement that he managed to try to do it so graciously, said Griswood. Eight grandchildren also survive Philip, Peter and Zara Phillips, Prince William and Prince Harry, Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, and women, Lady Louise Windsor and James Viscount Seven. He had great, ten great-grandchildren. Thanks for listening. Please like, comment and subscribe.